Hello, good afternoon. We are so excited, and I am actually joined by Dr. Robert Slairdon in the studio. Good to be here. Can you all believe that? Just let me geek out for a hot minute, okay? So we actually don't have that much interaction, meaning we're in the same circle of Caneo, but I haven't really dealt with you too much, Mm -hmm. and yet... One time, I found myself at dinner around a table last spring. Maybe you remember this, maybe you don't. And we had, you know, Dr. Roberts there, and we had Pastor Jeff Lyle there, and um, Pastor Todd and Dr. Karen. And I just remember thinking, Amber, you better shut your mouth and keep it closed. You have nothing to add to this conversation. Just glean, just glean. Mm. And so, Dr. Roberts, to have you in the studio is such a pleasure Such an honor. If you guys do not know him or he is new to you, will you let me know in the comments? Just say, wow, a new face. He is the author of God's Generals series. He is a study and has studied multiple different revivals in history. Uh, In fact, I think my kids might know more about you than I do. It's possible. He does kids ministry now. And they came home with a story that I actually am curious about. Okay, what's the, sto- what's the story? <laughs> yeah, right. What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> so they were telling about somehow the moment you were called or God spoke to you and called you and you, you formed your, your mission, if you will. Mm-hmm. You knew what you were called to do. So can you tell me and maybe them a little bit more about that? Are they talking about the eight-year-old experience? I believe so. Yeah. When I was eight years old, I uh, had an encounter of going to heaven. Wow. And in that encounter, that visit, my call was given to me at the end of it. Wow. And so that's probably what they're all were talking about. So I wrote a little book called I Saw Heaven that some people know about. Uh, but that's what they're talking about. So I went to heaven and saw parts of heaven, and then my call came to me, and I came back. How's so, that for a simple little... Yeah, well, out? hold on. So you went to heaven, and he called you to do what? He called me to... to he, actually, I was eight years old, and he said, I'm calling you to preach while you're yet called young, is one of his phrases wow. that he said. And, and I was to run fast. And he said the word go three times. So that's probably why I do what I've done. I've been to 127 countries in person. Wow. So that means I've visited over half the world in person. So uh, so that part of that is going. And so that means I also do big cities. Yep. I do small little country yep. places in America and all over the world. I do bush country ministry. So I'm one of those guys that you see on the big stage. And tomorrow night, I'm out in a field oh, uh, in a barn. Goodness. So I do all of it. And so I've learned... That's where God sends you and be happy and preach like you're preaching to everybody, whether it's five people or 5,000. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I actually had the pleasure of sitting under your teaching last year when I came on with Caneo. They said, okay, you know, go make all these calls. And I said, well, I can't make calls if I don't know what I'm a part of. Yeah. So I made sure I snuck into a classroom. I remember you being there. Let yes. me just say, he is a delight to sit under. I got so many rich nuggets. And I'll tell you a testimony after this slide, but we won't take time with my testimonies. Okay. So we are just such, uh, it's just an honor to have you as a part of this school. Mm. Tell me about the time, how this all happened. Like, you're here and Caneo, professor, and yeah. what did that? It's odd that I'm here like I am, so yes. to be honest. Well, the story as it is, I'll, I'll give you my quick rendition, was uh, the Lord spoke to me, I want you back in the classroom, because I have built five accredited Bible schools before. Me and wow. my mother did that. Right. So I love the Bible schools. I know how they run and all that. So I thought, good, I get to build another school. And the Lord said, no, and that was it for the conversation. I want you in the classroom, but no, you're not building your own. So I just kind of said, okay. And then about two weeks after that, Pastor Todd and Karen called me on the phone, and as they'll tell the story, thinking... This is never going to happen. They asked, would you be a part of like the weekly, daily teaching of the school? And I said, if you'd asked me two weeks ago, I'd have said no. But because of what the Lord said, the answer is yes. Wow. And it's super natural that I'm actually keeping a full schedule like I normally do. Wow. And I'm here in the school every Tuesday. At first it was right. Thursdays, now it's Tuesdays. Right. And so um, I actually have a little apartment here now that I got because I'm here so much of the time, so I fly in out of it, and so that's how I got here. Wow. And so I'm very happy here. This one, my second year, I think it is. Yes, yes. And uh, so it's it's exciting. So that's how I wow. got here, everybody. Isn't that amazing? So think about this, because initially you were in Florida, so every week you would travel yeah, back would, and yeah, forth to yeah, teach yeah. in person. Y'all, he doesn't live stream in. He is right here in Dawson. Live is teaching. better. 
than streaming. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. So I appreciate streaming, but there's nothing better than the live yes. anointing, the live in interaction. Yes, yeah. and the students right in front of you and the interaction yeah. there and the energy in the room, so good. So as a studier of revivals, mm. you've seen various amounts of revivals, and I love what you say, how, you know, God's not always going to do the same thing all the time, right? Yep. So talk about maybe this revival, the immersion revival that we're going through. And Is that the new name for it, the immersion revival? I mean, how, what should I we call it the water it? baptism revival. Okay, water and baptism. And then, then and we got a North Georgia revival. So I've like two or three titles I've heard. So we need to know what the official title is so we can all keep saying the same thing. Yes, yes. I yeah. guess official would be North Georgia revival, okay. but water baptism, if you say. Yeah, because that's really what's happening. And yeah. when I came here, it was just kind of odd how I got to know about the revival. And so I came. I, I, I liked everything about it, but it was a little unusual in this aspect. I never saw a revival that focused mainly on water baptism. Mm -hmm. Water baptism has always been in every revival. I mean, when you read them through history, part of being in the revival being converted, you're, you're baptized. Yeah. But there's something special about the baptism side of this one, mm -hmm. because that's the focal point. So when you're in the revival here, you are you have a good message, good praise and worship. They have altar calls, pray for them. But it turns toward the baptism, yep. and that's where the big stuff happens. And people say, why? Well, that's what the Lord told Pastor Todd. So you have to always go back to the initial announcement from heaven to earth and what he said. I want to put fire on the waters of baptism. And that's what's happened. And so you can always tell those who are a part of the revival. You go to the church, you have a big water baptism pool in front yeah, of the church. The can, this is a Todd Smith church because <laughs> they've got the big baptism thing. So, you know, it's, it was very unique like that. The other thing I will say since I've been here for about two years is this is a peaceful revival. Hmm. Now, and that's not a negative or derogatory because normally revivals that I've been around and the ones I've studied have great happenings, what's going on, but then there's chaos. Hmm. And I've noticed here there's a peace. Everybody participates in this revival. I've been here for two years, and I'm with students, I'm with church people, I'm with staff, and I'm all over. Yeah. And I listen to people. Because yeah. hearing people talk tells you the heart. Mm. I've not heard. Now, it may have happened. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard one person talk against the leadership or very much any other mm. while I've been here. So I've, that's a sign of maturity. And the only thing that I've had people would be upset about was they weren't able to keep their commitment to work on the night of the revival or they were on holiday. Should I cut my holiday short to be back? Yes. Those are called positive revival problems. Yes. So those are things that I find very interesting. And it, to me, it's a maturity Wow. of how Pastor Todd and Karen and the team has built it. Mm. And uh, people are not exhausted. Mm. I know they're tired because there's a lot going on, but they're not that, what I call revival tired, I'm ready to quit and go someplace else. Yeah. So it's managed in a very different way than other revivals. So wow. to me, there's something that people can learn how to manage their revival by studying what mm. Pastor Todd and Karen and the team has done. This is also the first time in history where you'll hear different revival movements they talk about stewarding or how to handle the revival. Normally, it just hits, and you do your best to maintain it and carry it, yeah. and uh, you make some mistakes, and you do some good. But on the, but they've actually sit down, Pastor Todd and some other like, revival movements, sit down, but how do we sustain this yeah. in a healthy way and to avoid some of the revival ditches and problems because most revivals in weird. And so that's a very... I wish it wasn't true, Yeah. but then you look at some of the reasons why. Like Azusa Street, as great as it was, with three and a half years, night and day, did not stop for wow. three and a half years. So wow. first off, we salute them. Here yeah. in Dawsonville, mm -hmm. we, we meet on the weekend or a yeah. special conference time. So that was a decision that was made, and the fruit of it is obvious. That was the right decision yeah. of how they maintain it in the church and in the community. So at Azusa Street, when it ended, there was... Uh, Spiritual, uh, spiritualism in the altar of Azusa Street that did not get out. So the wrong thing began to creep in. There was division and strife. So what happened, I think, with them and many revivals is they get tired. Mm -hmm. Because they're going, even though Daddy Seymour had a team, but still, yeah. three and a half years, night and day, Whoa. I salute them. Yeah. I, I respect them. I don't know if I could do that. I mean, I could try, but I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. So out of respect, you also have to learn from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I think many of these revivals end kind of odd because they're tired. And when you're tired, you permit things that you normally would not permit, mm -hmm. or you forget to do things you normally would do because you're, you're tired. tired. So it's not a devil. 
It's right. tiredness and the effect is tiredness. Wow. So that's why here in, in North Georgia Revival, they've managed it in a way where they've gone five years, baptized 35,000 plus yeah. people, have documentation of all the God's healing. We can prove it. It's not just talk or exaggeration. It's all, it can be proven. And so it's, it's really a, a great thing. So I hope that this is a new trend mm. in revivals going forward, that the people where God hits them think, how do we sustain it? Yeah. How do we not destroy our church family? Because another thing that happens in revival, because when I moved to Florida, it's kind of interesting for everybody. When I moved to Florida, Central Florida in 20 years had four major revival outbreaks, which is very wow. unusual. Yeah. Normally, most people only have a prophetic word and it never shows up. Wow. God's going to come and visit, but it never happens for, for reasons. And so uh, when I moved to Florida, they, they, they would say revival kills churches. And this was coming from good people, good mm. pastors that I love and respect, and large churches that grew up. And, and I thought, I have never heard. And it's not an anti-revival people. They're not folk. They're part, they said, we've been a part of some of these moves. And when it's done, we have no church left. Wow. So it was like, in their mind, these revivals destroy churches. So I begin to say, all right, these are not stupid people. Mm -hmm. They're not anti. They're just making a factual statement from their experience, which I think, we should listen to. So I begin yeah. to ask more questions. And I figured they didn't know how to take care of their local congregation, why the world is coming. Because mm. sometimes that gets blurred in the midst of revival. Whoa. Because you can't tell where your people are and where the folks who took six weeks off for vacation and come here. And they're, and they're going home. So these people have to work. Wow. Their kids have to go to school. Yeah. They want to help in the revival. Mm -hmm. And so, but they can't do everything that needs to be done because they still got babies. Yeah. Like, they still got to feed babies, get to school and do all that kind of stuff and do the revival. And most people are sacrificing. Yeah. But sometimes there has to be a minute where Pastor Todd and some of these do are actually figuring out how to do this. Hmm. And so the term revival kills churches comes from that disposition. They don't know how to take care of their congregation because one day it'll come to its proper conclusion it has fulfilled what god wanted to do mm. and it will come to an end and an end is not a sad thing it means you it's did it its purpose you, you did your job it, it got done it was fulfilled and, and you could be happy mm. we want it to go forever but there's something else coming so mm. we need to finish what we're doing so that which is coming can come on in Hmm. So it's not like when in the Bible, when something ends prophetically, it's an immediate announcement that something greater is coming. Wow. So when I say revival's end, I don't get sad because it means there's another one greater coming not far from now. So I think we have to look at these people. Tra pastors have to take care of their congregations okay. during the revival. The one, the one revival that I was a part of years in the 90s in Sweden, a great national revival there, that pastor had a... Was it twice or three times a month? Am I outside my picture zone? Okay, okay, I'll come and talk like this. He he had a meeting just for his church members. No Bible school students, no visitors, just those who that was their home church. And so when that revival had done its course, he still had a congregation of happy, a little tired, but happy people because wow. he took care of them. And so I think we have to find ways mm -hmm. to take care of them. So those are some things I see about this revival uh, that is a little unique wow. and I think is a trend for future revivals. Mm. And I love that. Like he just dropped some really good nuggets about the current of what's happening in response to all that he studied. And mm. so how fascinating is that? Now tell me, has there ever been a revival that was paired with a school or how do you kind of see the Well, two it, it usually happens that way all the time. So most of our great seminaries or great colleges like Yale and these great schools were birthed out of revival movements. So you go back in American history, British history, European history, you've got great schools that came out of the Protestant Reformation, mm. came out of the Wesleyan. So you have that. So this is not unusual. It is typical. Because what happens is the light draws the people. Mm. And they get an affinity. They, they, this becomes their home. And so there comes a responsibility to take care and mature the people who now become your responsibility in mm. some kind of way. So we always have these type of things like Caneo and the North Georgia Revival. So to me, it's it's a typical revival happening. So Very good. I think that one difference maybe, and you can correct me, is actually the school here was in place and then the revival hit. 
And so now, of course, the school has grown mm, much mm, more in yes. size and obviously with campuses nationwide. But how phenomenal that, you know, obviously God knew what was yeah. coming. And so here we have the school, the revival yeah. hits, and then we get to continue that partnership yeah. with. And it's great that people can do their biblical learning while in a revival yeah. atmosphere or revival occurrence. Yeah. That combination is the best way to learn the Bible. Because you're reading and learning the actual Logos mm. while the Rhema is happening at the same time. you got both things running around. So, and whether you're called to be a minister or not, Bible training is a help to your entire life. It's, the, it's the only knowledge that goes into every career, every part of your life, and affects it in a good way. Mm. Medical science knowledge only affects you in the field of medicine. Yeah. Spiritual knowledge affects your career, your marriage, your children, your money. So you can never go wrong with taking a year out or a couple of years, and, and learning the word. When I had my school in California, I always found it funny. We had newlyweds come from their honeymoon to Bible school, and they started their first year Smart. in Bible school. And I thought, you know, you got to salute these kind of people Smart. who fell in love, got married, and decided let's start our life wow. going to school and learning the word together so we can live this what a foundation. Together. And it was it was always fun. I'm like, how many newlyweds? I mean, at least we won. No. So it's one of those really unique things I loved about that. So it's not a waste of time. Bible training affects mm. every part of your life. Yes. And uh, medicine only affects you in medicine. But spiritual life affects you everywhere. That's so good. Because if you're watching and you're thinking, I haven't been called to be a pastor. I haven't been called to be a prophet. Oh, my goodness. Are you a believer? Mm. You, right? Get deep into the word. And like he said, in a revival setting, you're getting that fresh revelation mm. with the Logos and the Rhema yeah. completely um, together. Oh, I love the comments, you guys. We are going to make sure we hit those. So I have a couple fan questions, if okay. you don't. I've got fans. Okay. <laughs> you don't mind. So the first one that kind of made me laugh is somebody wants to know if you like sushi. No, I like my fish cooked. Okay. Okay. I tried sushi once in California and I couldn't put it down. It came back. So, oh, I guess no. that, so that's too much information, but that's, you asked the question. Uh, you can eat it. I'll pay for it, but I can't eat it. I, I, need, I need my fact. fish cooked. In fact, so. do you remember last year you actually took me out to dinner? We were with other people, but for my birthday. Uh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It was such a pleasure. And I had cooked fish that night. It was yeah, salmon. it was cooked. It was very good. Yes. Um, okay. And then also I had a question come in that said, what do you think about women in ministry? So. I'm 100% for them. I think a woman can do everything a man can do if they meet the same requirement, which simply means, did God tell you to do it? Mm. So if God called you to be a, an apostle or a prophet or a pastor or whatever, if he told you, he knew you were a woman, and plus a sign of the rise of women in ministry is an end time sign. So when you read the book of Acts, it says in the last days, there'll be young people and it talks about women being active. Yep. So they're not just making quilts and sending food to hungry missionaries. They're actually doing the stuff. So mm. it's uh, women have always been a part of the Lord's ministry. They, they've been one of the persecuted groups outside of the church and inside the church. But we have more women in the spirit filled world mm. actively successfully than any other Christian group. Wow. So if you're out there watching and you feel you're a woman, you're called to preach and you're going to a church that doesn't believe that women can do it. Here's my root advice. Leave that church and go someplace where they accept you yeah. so you can flourish and become all you're supposed to. It's ridiculous to think they're going to do it just for you. No, they're not. So they'll love you to a certain point, and then that's mm, it. We want you to go full out all the way. Wow. And so, uh, you know, I, I say things like that because it needs to be said. So, <laughs> so I feel sorry for ladies. Well, they one day they're going to do that. No, they're not. You know, very rarely does that denomination change mm. or that structure of that church change. So you have to be polite. Don't blow it up. Don't get mad. Just politely go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Yeah, that's so, good, actually, that they will only love you or I don't yeah. remember the you word Let you only said. go so far. Let you only go so far and then that's it. Yeah. That's like some women, they can get up and do a Bible lesson or they can do women's meetings they can't preach. Right. And the main service. Yeah, stuff nursery. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I'm, I think that's unfair. Hmm. In the spirit, there's not male or female. Hmm. So if we walk in the spirit, we don't relate to each other by our gender our color, our age, our economic so status. So and so we, we relate to who you are in Christ and what your job is for yeah. Christ. So yeah. that's kind of how the full gospel church kind of relates it. So we have more women successful in ministry in the tongue-speaking world than any other group out there. <laughs> I think you're in good company. Right. Good news. So good I'm news. pro, and there's a, there's a couple good books. If you have a problem, <laughs> Kenneth Hagin has a good book called The Woman Question, which is a simple, easy, quick read. 
And then there's a book called 10 Lies About Women Preaching by Lee Grady. Mm. It's a big, thick book. And uh, those are two good books if you want to read about it. And um, and give them to people who don't like women for Christmas gifts. So uh, <laughs> He's spicy. I love him so, so much. So speaking of books, do you happen to have a favorite book? I know he's written, is it almost 80? How many books uh, have you I've written? I've written 92 books now. 92 books. Yeah, 92 okay. books. And is, I actually got a new one on my on my couch at home that I'm proofing. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. So is there perhaps a favorite book that you've written? I know that. That's oh, like that I've like, written. Yeah, by you. Yeah. You yourself. I would have to say my um, my first God's Generals book, the blue cover one. Blue, yeah. The original one, the, the first, that is one of my favorites. And then the one, Breaking Controlling Powers, How to Get Free mm. from Excessive Control. There is good control in life. But many people live their whole life under a wrong restraint. I believe you need to be under authority to have authority. But sometimes there are wrong restraints and wrong controls. They try to bind you and you have to get free from it. Yeah. And I wrote a book on that. Wow. And uh, it's one of my best selling books. So those are my two. Okay, well, for Christmas, I want that. So I don't know if my husband's watching. He should be. Um, okay, and then also tell me currently, what are the classes or courses that you teach here at Caneo? I'm teaching, I do um, God's Gentleness course. I did two of the books. There's six books out, so I did two of them. I did uh, the Pentecostal, the Blue Book, and the Green Book. So okay. I did the Pentecostal guys. And then I just finished up last night uh, the Gifts of the Spirit and the Fivefold Ministry so Gifts. So I did those two together. And then I start next week uh, on money, biblical economics, or financing your life with God as your partner. That's so where that's my testimony what, that's, comes that's from. Where you have a I have to share it with you after this. Okay. Yep. So those are your courses. They're yeah. fire. Listen, you will not get bored in Caneo classes. Our professors are the best because they're <laughs> passionate and they're incredibly called to speak on the topics that they speak on. So And super. they're good people. Pastor Karen's a great teacher. And Pastor Jeff... Amazing. I was in a hotel when I used to come into the hotel. Yes. And had the TV on. I was getting dressed. And he came on TV. I didn't know he had a TV show. Yes. So I was listening as I was getting dressed for church. I thought, this guy's great. And I began to listen to when he would fill in my class. So mm -hmm. Jeff <laughs> is an amazing Bible teacher, too. So I, I support what you're saying. No, they're fabulous. And also, let me give you a little plug. He does back porch chats every day, normally 10 around 10 a.m. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just tune in, get some rich nuggets, get to know Dr. Roberts Lairdon. He is a gift to the school and incredible, as you know, just dropping the nuggets of revival and just Bible and all the things. So if you have anything uh, to wrap up about, I'll give you the final say. We would like for you to consider coming to the school if you're not. Uh, taking time. If you're called to ministry, you need some training. Training guarantees you a quicker success. And when you get to success, you stay there. And so Bible training, coming to Bible school is not a waste of time. If Jesus comes Amen. while you're in Bible school, he'll count your life as complete because you're on your road to it. Mm -hmm. So some people, I can't go to school. The Lord's are coming. Please go to school. Yeah. It'll stop some of the stupid stuff you don't have to go through. Go and, and, and you can, when you actually get to the mountain of where you're supposed to be, you can stay so. and, and finish your, your life in where you're supposed to be. So please consider Bible school. And with Caneo, you don't have to come to the main campus. Right. There's 40 plus campuses you have now. 40 campuses nationwide. And if you're interested in being coming a campus, now is the perfect time. So reach out to me because it's a great time to get those, you know, foundations set and launch in the fall. Sounds good. Okay. Last question. Cause I thought of something. Right. So Holy Spirit totally walked in in a manifested way this year in your classroom. Yes. I and wish you'd come every week like that. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. On your birthday. It was on my birthday, too, which was really nice. So it, it was, I'd, I was finishing the God's Journals class, yeah. the, the course, and um, I'd come to the end of it, and I was praying the last prayer before I let the class go, and it hit my, in the sentence, the first sentence. It took me about five to six minutes to figure out, I need to step out of this because it's not about me no more, and I'm not in charge. Yes. So you know, even though I preach revival and you got to give up, when you're in control, and it, hit, it takes a while for it to connect. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this has nothing to do with me. So I stepped over, and we had about an hour, two, I mean, an yes, hour and a half, two was. hour flow. And it was it was very powerful. It was very, very wow. wonderful. We had a touch that hit. And the students were marked. You talked to yeah. any of those students in the classroom or watching live stream. They were mm -hmm. marked that night. There's nothing like an encounter. Yep, yeah, nothing. And everyone needs one. Amen. Especially our younger generation. That's why they're crazy right now. <laughs> they need <laughs> a Jesus encounter that we can't do as friends that's or right. parents. We have ours. We, we had different things in our life. And, and they need their encounter that changes them.
for life. Wow. And so maybe can they all be that for some and Amen. wherever it happens, let it be. Amen. Even in your quiet time, bring revival to your quiet time each yep. day, each morning. All right. Well, thank you again. Anytime. Maybe he wasn't tortured and he might come back again. Just ask me, I'll come back. Oh my so. goodness. So exciting. All right, friends. Well, we are going to check the comments, get right back to you, uh, you know, in the next couple of days. Thank you again for your Anytime. time. And we love y'all and reach out if you have any questions. See you. Bye.